Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to Pure Ministries. My name is Robert Pears. In these last days, we are seeing the spiritual warfare intensify. And I believe there's a lot going on in the earth that we're not fully aware of. And in this hour of lawlessness, it's critical that we recognize the strategy of the enemy. We face a cruel and relentless uh, enemy who seeks to bombard you often with the same attack again and again and again. You may be standing and doing all that you know to do, and it looks like you keep failing. And this enemy wants to so discourage you that you quit or you pull back. And it's essential that we, number one, understand the strategy of the enemy. And number two, press into the secret place and get the strategy from heaven. God wants that we get the revelation that through Christ, we are always gaining a far surpassing victory. God never wants to see you walking in defeat. He is there with you. He is for you. And through you, he wants to demonstrate the victory that Jesus won the cross. We are called to be witnesses. We are called that everywhere we go, we carry that fragrance of the victory of Christ so that people see that Jesus is Lord and that through us, that demonstration that they might know. So if you're ready, let's pray, let's press in and get ready to receive a word that I know will really bless you really help you in these last days. If you're in that place where you're just frustrated, you're in that place where you're just, you're about to quit, in that place where you're just so dumb because you've done everything you know and it keeps failing, then this word is for you. It's gonna bless you, it's gonna provoke you, it will convict you, but it's a powerful now word that I know will minister to you mightily. So let's pray, let's press in, and let's receive. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come to you. We come by way of the blood and we ask of you, Father, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Holy Spirit, I thank you there's no distance in the Spirit. So would you come? Would you open the word like never before? Would you come and minister to each person listening and watching? Strengthen them so they rise up again. Encourage them so that they go forward. And I thank you, Father, that it would help them, Father, to so stand strong and gain the far surpassing victory that Jesus won for us. And I thank you, Father, in the name that's above all names, the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. If we start in 2 Corinthians, if you'll go there real quick, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, a couple of powerful verses here. And in verse 11, we're told, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices or schemes. And the word devices there is method, it's, it's a method. And one of the things that he will do actually is, when we look close to the Greek there, is he gets behind and he follows and he has familiar spirits that are watching so they can get a hold of every mistake. They can really learn who you are and your weaknesses. Uh, we see this, and I want to show you this real quickly, in Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27. Well, read verse 26 so you can see something here. And you shall be holy to me, for I am the Lord, am holy, and I have separated you from the peoples that you should be mine. So we walk differently. We are to walk always seeking his face as people hold down to the Lord. He then warns a man or a woman who is a medium. So you're either hearing the voice of the Lord and being guided by him, or there are these false voices on the earth, these mediums, who has a familiar spirit. These familiar spirits like to lie and deceive, but they know a lot of stuff because they've recorded it. Now, a few weeks ago, 
oh, a few months ago, um, I had these ponds in my backyard and I had the fish in them. They had survived the winter and I was excited. And I was really excited because they got quite big. And all of a sudden I noticed they seemed to disappear. And I'm, I was shocked. I'm looking for them and I'm like, I just saw them. And I go to the specialist and you know, what, what's happened? What could have happened? And they said, well, it could be a raccoon. It could be a blue heron. And I'm like, Lord, I have not seen, I'm far inland. I have not seen any blue herons. And like, well, it most likely then is a raccoon. So I put up chicken wire around my pond. So I've got two of them and put some fish in and everything seemed to be going well. I actually got some prize fish and my ponds were looking great, you know, covering water lilies and plant look good. And then all of a sudden I felt like something wasn't right. I felt like, you know, some of the fish were disappearing and I pray about it. And one day I'm looking at my window and my ponds are quite a distance from my house. And I see a blue heron and the blue heron is a little bit back. Now I had prepared and I thought, well, if it is, I want a strategy for what it might be. And so I asked these people, what can I do? And so I put up this motion detector that would make this noise. And I thought, okay, so I see this blue heron. I thought, that blue noise is scaring it, keeping it back. Good, this is working good. But what I started to understand later was that Blue Heron was studying. This is what he was doing, like the enemy. He likes to get and study what was in every palm so that he knew what fish were in them. And he was a smart bird. We don't face a enemy who's ignorant. He's very smart. And if you operate naturally, you will fail. You're going to have to get the expertise of heaven to overcome. You have to understand that he is relentless, but he has no endurance. And it's essential, as I'm going to show you a little bit later, to get a hold of one powerful truth that I missed early on. Because in a lot of our strategies, we're always seeking what's the least we can do. Because to do something great and big requires a big investment. And when we're, when we're fighting, it's always what's the least we can do to overcome. Sadly, what happens, you do something, and I would take one action, and this bird came back. And I did a lot of things, a lot of steps, and it would keep defeating every one of my steps and getting more of my fish. And it got to a place that was very frustrating, and my wife and my kids said, you know, just quit, it's over. And I said, no, it is not. I don't quit. I don't stop and you've got to get that in you. I said, because if I do, the consequences, the damage is, is greater. And there's always more at stake in just simply quitting. We don't quit. And that was the place where I finally got a hold of what the Lord was saying to me all along. So I want to say, always pray, God, give me ears to hear. Because you're going to find that he will tell you the answer, the strategy. Often we don't hear the whole of it, or we hear part and we just run based on opinion. But we've got to understand how the enemy works and that he operates through familiar spirits. He's studying, he's watching, he's looking for your weakness. Now, number two, we have to understand from John chapter 10, the goal of the enemy. So often the enemy wants to lie to you and convince you it's not him. It's Jesus trying to teach you something. In John 10, verse 10, it says, The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the enemy. That is not God. Now, again, the enemy is going to try to persuade you that it is the Lord or to get you to quit. To get you to quit. Well, God's trying to teach you something. Give you reasons and excuses to quit and let him take everything. Now, the next point I want to raise let me share with you what God wants. He went on to say, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So heaven wants you to have life and more abundantly. He is not seeking to kill, steal, and destroy. So you have to look at the fruit of something and realize that God is on your side to see you have life and that more abundantly. He wants the enemy to pay back sevenfold for what he's stolen from you. And there's always more at stake. The devil knows that too. A lot of time we don't. 
and we don't we fail to see all that's going on behind the scenes and what the enemy is trying to do now let me continue here so how do i get heaven's strategy how do we get to the place that we can truly hear and i'm going to encourage you to pray in the spirit building yourself up by praying in the spirit if you go to isaiah chapter 28 isaiah chapter 28 now this is something you should be doing every single day of your life praying in the spirit really helps your spirit walk in tune so that you hear more quickly accurately what heaven's saying you're walking in that realm where you're seeing more accurately the things of the spirit so in um isaiah 28 verse 11 for with stammering lips and another tongue he will speak to his people to whom he said this is the rest which may cause the weary to rest and this is the refreshing yet they would not hear and you're going to find there's something powerfully refreshing there's something powerful as you just begin to pray in the spirit because you don't know what to pray and i'm so grateful uh, for the mighty ministry of the holy spirit we need to throw our hands up and say holy spirit i'm weak and in this weakness would you come and pray through me the very perfect will of the father i don't know how to overcome in this situation i don't know how to defeat this thing this thing keeps coming back this thing torments wearies you makes you just totally weary this bird i had to get up very early in the morning because i knew it came early in the morning to chase it off i had to keep going out and checking and chasing it off i would have to come in the evening i would at times you said it's very you know fearful bird and run no it was not i could get within a couple of feet of this thing one night i came out it was raining and i come out and i have a torch or a, you know a spotlight and i have this lamp and i'm right within a couple feet shining in its eyes and it just stands still i discover it like this one of the strategies it stands still to convince you it's not there and we'll do that just stand still and you would often if you were looking from a distance because it was so still you would forget you would lose sight of the fact that it's there and that's what the devil does there are times where he just goes motionless and he's standing still so that you quit you have to keep praying in the spirit you have to keep pressing forward there are days where you are weary there are days where you want to quit you can't afford to you have to press forward even more so on those days stir yourself up shake off get the rest get the refreshment by praying in the spirit recognize what the enemy is doing is wearing down your flesh man so you don't walk by your flesh you walk by the spirit and you have to hear things spiritually so so to the spirit by praying and worshiping in the spirit so that you reap life okay continuing on here go to first corinthians chapter 15. now this was the verse the lord shared with me and i missed it but let's get a hold of this verse 55 of death where's your sting oh hades where's your victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to god who gives us the victory through our lord jesus christ that's where I stopped and I said, thank you, Jesus. I've got the victory, which is true. But that's not what he, where he wanted me to stop because he had more to say. Verse 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding. And this is not a real good trans translation. Always about going the extra, going more in the works of the Lord. Now, as I said, when I was looking at this bird, I would share with my wife, I really believe this is what we need to do. And my wife said, you don't want to do that. You know, you're going to be covering the pond. That's a lot of work. Why don't we just, the experts say this, let's just do that, try that first. And you try and you fail. You try this and you fail. And finally, I tried and said, I'm done trying all these things. And I suddenly read this verse and the Lord says, I told you, go the full hog. See, we typically, what's the least we can do? Whatever God puts in your spirit, don't look and say, well, that's a lot to pay. 
you do it in obedience because God will meet with you and you're going to find that you're going to save yourself a lot of pain and suffering and you're going to stop the devil stealing from you. So we finally sat and we began to build this thing. And I built the first one and I thought at this point maybe I'd scared him off. But no, no, no. He tried the other pond. Uh, so we built the second one and we covered it and that's when I discovered there were some more fish left and I'm so grateful to God and that bird knew it just because I couldn't see them he could and I'm grateful we built that thing and we finally defeated I built this cage with with um, chicken wire uh, it's not the prettiest but it looks good and it covers it gives enough room for my plants it allows birds in and allows the thing to work the way I want it to and you will find that the Lord has a winning strategy in every situation. He will inspire it into you. As you're praying in the Spirit, I find that all of a sudden He will begin to speak to your spirit. Now for me, I begin to see it. I see it in my head. I tell my wife, I don't know how to explain it. I will draw it out and say, look, I'm going to try to draw it for you because my words won't explain it, but I can draw I'm, I'm a visual person. And I said, this is what the Lord showed me to do. This is what I'm doing. And I find it's the same in the spiritual. He will share things with me and I can see it and I know what to do. Do it. Don't try to, well, can I get away with this? Do I really have to do that? Do everything he tells you to do. Be faithful because you're going to find that there's a lot more going on behind the scenes and you have a relentless enemy, but he doesn't have endurance. And this is my next point. If you will go to Romans chapter 3, as we got my notes on this, Romans chapter 3, or sorry, chapter 5, Romans chapter 5. In verse 3, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Did, did you hear that? We glory in tribulation. Now, let me just stop. If I was to do a poll, I thought about it the other day. Now, I, I could hear the Spirit joking me because, you know, YouTube had sent me this thing. Why don't you do some kind of poll to engage with your audience? And I thought, what I poll on? And, and it brought this up. It says, how many people glory in tribulation? How many people do? We don't glory. We get discouraged. It's not a fun thing when you're facing an uh, 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 you know, the enemy keeps coming back and he's stealing, he's taking from you, it's hurting you, it's, it's weary, it's weary, it's, 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 it's draining you. But the Bible says glory and the word glory here means to rejoice in it, to take time into his presence and rejoice. In the middle of the battle, I was talking to my wife and it, and, and it was getting stressed. We were like, we were getting to the point where we were discouraged, we were weary. And we're like, we don't know what to do. And I try and say to my wife, you know what I'm? I'm going upstairs and I'm going to praise him and I'm going to seek his face. When you don't know what to do, get up and rejoice and glory in him. Praise him and seek his face. Stop talking. Stop complaining, grumbling. Stop getting caught up in the thing. Getting caught up in him. Start glorying in him. Start honoring and worshiping him. And there comes a point where you get so consumed, you forget about the battle. You forget about the enemy because the enemy wants you focused and thinking about him. I will be focused on the Lord. The only thing I need to know is, God, tell me what he's doing, the strategies, so that I understand how to counter them, how to take a hold of what he's trying to do in my life, how he's trying to take my family, my kids, all those things, understand that, and how to take your word and to use it as a two-edged sword. How to stand spiritually and, and see the breakthrough, to see the blessings of my family. So I want, most importantly, your strategy. I have to glory in you. I have to seek your face and go after you and make a choice to praise you, to glory in it. Because it continues, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, character and character hope. Now this perseverance, if I show you something, you know, I, I, if you look at the book of Revelation and go to chapter 1, you see this, all the wrath of God, all the stuff that's coming in the tribulation period. But in this verse, chapter 1, verse 9, 
Listen very carefully. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation, in the kingdom, and patience or endurance of Jesus. Now go to chapter 3, verse 10, talking to the church of Philadelphia, which I believe we are. Because you have kept my command to persevere or to endure. It's not even a recommendation, it's a command. You and I are commanded to persevere, to endure. Why? Because the enemy can't. If you quit, he wants you to quit. He wants to he bombard you. He wants to demoralize you. He wants you weary, but he can't continue. Read the word. You will find there were seasons of persecution, seasons of attack, seasons, and they stopped because the enemy has no endurance. And you have to learn how to stand through it, to press through it. But I'm getting discouraged. Then get back into the glory. Get back into counting all joy as you stand in his presence and you worship him, recognizing there's more going on. There's more at stake. And don't let the enemy steal from you. Listen to this, Romans 15, chapter, Romans 15, sorry, verse 4, I believe it is. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scripture, might have hope. So the Scripture will produce in you this endurance of patience and comfort. Now, most of us talk about the comfort. I'm grateful the Scripture comfort me. But they will also produce in you endurance, patience. Because you look at what God, how He operates. Even when I look at the tribulation period, and I see what's going on in the earth right now. And I'm like, God, how have you not judged the earth already? I see the wickedness. I see the lawlessness. And then I understand He is long-suffering. He has a great deal of patience and endurance. And He will not act until that perfect time where He knows now is the time. Now is the time. We typically act emotionally and respond emotionally. If you're going to walk in patience and endurance, you have to learn to walk by the spirits and not based on emotions because there are times where emotionally I feel good and I'm able to endure. Endurance is pressing through when you feel the pain of it. When you're pressing, you're running the marathon and you're that place where now it hurts and you've got to keep going through the pain. That's to understand. See, if you're operating naturally, you quit. But if you're operating spiritually, you press through, understanding I have a goal. I'm running a race and it's not over. My number, my next thing is beware distractions. The devil would love to get you distracted. Look at this. Look at that where he wants to get you into your emotions. How many of you, you go to pray? You are excited, you get upstairs, you go into your prayer closet, whatever it is, and you begin to pray. And all of a sudden, your mind begins to remind you of all the things that you should be doing, didn't do. Oh, did you turn this off? Did you do this? Did you pay this? All these things. You didn't think about them all day, but now suddenly they are the most important things. No, they're not. They're called distractions. And the enemy will throw all kinds of distractions. When we're fighting, we're fighting the world, the flesh, and our devil, and the devil. And our flesh, he will inspire to bring up these thoughts because the battle is off between these two ears, right up here. And these thoughts we have to bring captive. And uh, also with that, opinions. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You all know these verses, but listen very carefully here. Verse 5. Casting down arguments 
and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought captive to the obedience. So you have to bring arguments or opinions. We like to argue our case. We like to be so strong in our opinions. You know, one of the most difficult things when you are in ministry is facing opinionated people. You're trying desperately to get them to see the problem, why they're in the situation they're in, why they can't get the breakthrough, but they will not let go of their opinions. And what's really bad is when you're talking to the Lord about, Lord, do you see that? And the Lord says, that's what you're like to me. And that's what we're like. God is trying to share things and show us things, but we're so rich and strong in our opinions that we cannot hear heaven. We've already predetermined what the answer is. And God's saying, I didn't say that. But we've already determined that. I love when people walk up and turn and say, well, God said this. And I said, did he? It doesn't sound like him. It sounds like that is brain tissue revelation. It's what you wanted to hear. And of course, people get offended at that. But we have to walk. Remember, he said, I'm holy. And we should consider a holy thing that if he speaks, he's going to align with this word. I should judge it and be so careful that I don't put his seal on it and it not be him, that I would dishonor him, that I would make him unholy. I want to make sure if I say God said that I really, it is him and not me or my opinion so that I'm standing in the way and hindering him moving in my life because I consider him holy. And I want to make sure that I bring every thought, every emotion, every opinion, every memory, because all these things are what the enemy will use. All of a sudden he'll stir up a hurt. All of a sudden, you're in the middle of something and there's a hurt you haven't thought about in years. What your dad did to you or something. All of a sudden, things come back and they get you so that you're paralyzed by it. You bring it captive. Get in the spirit, glory in your Lord God and bring it to him. Say, God, I can't handle this. I'm giving it to you. I'm casting this thing on you. Cast it, throw it. Don't just hang on and say, what do you think? You get rid of it. Get it out of your hands. Because what you hold in your hands prevents God from putting into your hands. So get it out. Cast it on Him. Get it out of your hands and get your hands lifted and worship and surrender to the Lord your God, honoring Him, blessing Him. And understand what the devil's trying to do. The Word says that you're to get the help from His presence. So understand that you've got to get into His presence. But I don't feel anything. There again is what the devil wants, a distraction. It's how you feel. It's not about how you feel. It's about the authority of the word that if I draw nigh unto him, he will draw nigh unto me. And if you will really get into this worship of him, if you get so caught up in glory in him, I'm telling you, you'll get a known that he's present. Not a feeling. I don't want to walk by a feeling. I want to walk by a knowing. Feelings change. Knowings don't. That place where on the inside of me, I know because of his word. I know because of his faithfulness. I know. Now, I want to share something here. I thought, God, okay, I can do this. And then he brought up something. And I pray that we get a hold of this. Because this is something we don't think about but the enemy works on. He said, break wrong words. Break wrong words that you have spoken. How many of you have spoken a wrong word over your children? A wrong word over your marriage? You've cursed it. Because out of frustration, see, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And out of my mouth, all of a sudden, not just only the blessings come, but curses come. I said out of my frustration something that I didn't mean to. Well, repent of it. Get it under the blood. How many people we've rejected? We got angry and we rejected and we said things that we should never have said. Well, then repent of it. Get it under the blood because the devil loves to use words. He's a manipulator. He plays with words. Have you ever gone into a court? But you said this, but that's not what I meant. 
but you said it and that's how he works and he wants to play with that and he will take that seed into the heart of somebody else and begin to destroy them we don't always think about all the damage our words are doing in the lives of others so let's repent let's get them washed and let's if necessary go and make right with those people because of those wrong words we spoke shut the door to the enemy and begin to speak a right word begin to speak a blessing so that you don't respond jesus on the cross in the midst of it, where he's going through it he's dying on the cross and in severe pain and what does he say destroy them lord no forgive them lord for they do not know what they do think about that my next thing be careful of the sin of omission james 4 james chapter 4 james 4 and this may go to when god says to you go repent to somebody james 4 verse 16 says this I got the right one. Verse 17, sorry. Verse 17, 4, 17. Therefore to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. When God tells you to do something and we don't do it, we end up in this place of omission. And many people have walked in omission where there's stuff we knew that we were supposed to do and we didn't do it. And we don't recognize it's sin. God is calling for us to walk in obedience. He's calling for us to hear His voice and to trust and to do. There's a lot of things He will say, go out from, leave, but I don't want to. We need to repent of that. And we need to say, okay, I choose. I don't want to, but I repent, but I'm doing it anyways. Because you said to. Because there's something about obedience. We may not understand the full reasons But one day you will. Sometimes he has to get you out of things that would cause such problems, that would hinder him operating in your lives. There are relationships that he may have severed. There are some people he may have removed from your life. He may take you from one place and put you somewhere else. But I liked it there. He may tell you, don't do that anymore. But I like that. He's doing things to cut off wrong stuff, to purge, to prune, and to purify you for your good because he has a great purpose and he's trying to bring the best out of you and he has to take from all that contamination all that stuff that would hinder and destroy you all the things that become openings to the enemy my next point keep the right attitude this sounds easy remember we talked about glorying him do you remember that paul at the end of his journey and he's still going through it he's probably every step of his way there were so many difficult seasons, and even at the end, difficult season. And yet he turns says to us, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. We're also told, count it all joy when you encounter various trials. Count it all joy. Rejoice. Are they crazy? No, they had a different perspective because they stood in the presence of the living God, looking at him, not at their problem. If your eyes are on the problem, the eyes are on the damage, on what's been destroyed, and not on Him, you will be discouraged, you will be so broken, get your eyes on Him. He's not done yet. Let Him show you what to do. He is a God who's able to restore, able to redeem. He's able to so make things back and and bring them back even better. I trust Him. I get my eyes on Him because there's always more at stake. You are not always aware of what's happening behind the scenes. Just because it seems quiet and God's not doing anything doesn't mean nothing's happening. I sat there and I'm like, God, I, 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 don't, I can't see the bird at night. To my, I'm, I'm trying to stop him. And the Lord turned and said to me, he brought this thing. You don't see what's going on behind the scenes, but I do. He said, would you like me to give you eyes to see? And I said, oh, yes. He said, why don't you get your son's night vision goggles? I did. All of a sudden, and I started to understand. See, God was sharing with me, showing me, and teaching me through this. And I'm so grateful. We have to learn, God, give me eyes to see what's really happening. 
to see the big picture, to see the consequence, to see God from your perspective so that I walk in and act correctly and I don't somehow hinder you. I don't want to get to the place where I stand before the Lord in heaven and the Lord said you were this close to your breakthrough. You were this close. I was so seeking and you stopped it. Ephesians chapter 6. We all know this. Chapter 10, or sorry, 6, verse 10 and 12. We have to recognize the enemy. Don't mistake the person or the thing for the enemy. I sat there, and at one point I was joking with somebody, I want to kill the bird. And I was joking, and the Lord corrected me. And the Lord says, you recognize your true enemy. And you don't ever, ever, ever respond in kind or respond at the person or the thing you recognize the enemy and you love the person or the thing you love them and you walk right and you treat them right like jesus did they may not deserve it they may deserve a lot of things but it's not your job to render it to them that's the lord's your job is to be demonstrating the character of christ in that situation so that you allow him to do the big thing the greater thing so you watch let me show you another one. Galatians 4, verse 16. Galatians 4, verse 16. Listen to this very carefully, please. Paul said, Have I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? There are sometimes people who are going to bring you the truth. I found that God will speak through your spouse. God, they may not even know the situation and God can use them. Nothing more frustrating than when you think that you're spiritually correct, you've got it all lined up and you're doing the right thing, and your spouse comes along and says something, and you know they're right, but your pride won't let you admit it. And all of a sudden you turn on them. Don't do it. Don't understand how the enemy wants to take advantage of you through pride and other things. Don't do it. You walk right. You repent and you recognize they're not your enemy. And if God speaks through a donkey, if God speaks through your wife, if God speaks through your child, wherever way it does, God brings a message to you and you know it's Lord, you receive it. If it brings conviction, you receive it and you repent. We need to be the most repentful people because we're imperfect. That's why I'm grateful that in 2 Peter chapter 1, he says, if you practice these things, we practice. We don't get it right the first time, the second, the third. We keep practicing. Don't quit. You keep practicing. You keep pressing. And if you fail, you get back up. You get back up and you go again. Amen? We are in a battle. We are in a battle and we have to understand that He is operating through the world. He will use people. He will use your flesh. And He will try to stop you. Now, I want to finish with this. Knowings. In Acts 27, and I was trying to find a good verse to, to share this with you. And this will have to do for right now. In Acts 27, verse 10, Paul is on his way back, or his way to Rome. And he's in the boat, and of course, he says this, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster. There is a perceiving. Many of us, when we pray, we pray again how we feel. I feel, and I've been told, and I follow your formula. I pray to ask, it's done. And we don't keep continuing. I'm not saying continue to ask, but to continue to pray, to press in, to worship, to glory, until we perceive or we know that we know. Never quit till you get to the place that you know. I have found that a lot of times you have to pray to get into prayer. We want to come immediately and we've just entered God's gates and we're asking. And we've not taken the time to know Him, to worship Him, to hear what He has to say, so that he would say, now ask. I, wait, I'm, I, I found that there's great success in coming to the place of just being in tune and waiting till he says, now ask. Because when you do that, you're going to find he's ready and that, that breakthrough is right there. If there, you're in that place, you're going to find your heart is being brought into alignment with him. You're going to find that He's been able to get into you His purpose, His desire. 
You're going to find the Spirit is able. He's pulled from the treasury of the Father's heart, imparted and impregnated in you, and it's time now for it to come out. And you're going to find that He always has a perfect time. He's never late. Sometimes it's frustrating. Sometimes you're like, God, but He's never late. Don't ever think He's late. You keep standing. You keep holding. And you keep waiting until He says, now. And I've found there's that now and there's a knowing. And when I get the knowing, I know it is done. I change and there's like a difference of worship. There's a thanking. There's a recognizing. It has been done. And that's where we've got to get to. Uh, I pray. See, we, have to, we quit too easy. We quit too soon. And we can be that close to the breakthrough. We quit. We've already moved on. We've given it the least. Give it all. Give it more. So more. So more into the Spirit. So more. If you've been so, go after God for more of Him. Always want more. Give more. Go forward more. And you're going to find, you're going to place yourself in a position where He will lead you always into that far surpassing victory because that's what He wants. And that far surpassing victory, it's not just about you defeating the enemy, but it's about your family, your loved ones, your marriage. It's so much more. Amen. We want to see it, this nation changed. We want to see breakthroughs in situations. And we often overlook these small battles and quit. And it's a lot of time those small battles are critical. Now, I'm going to say this. Sometimes in the midst of that, you might lose a battle. No. Shh. No. Sometimes in the midst of that war. No, I need you. Please. I'm almost done. Now, sometimes in the midst of this thing, you might lose a battle. You may be standing, and for example, with your spouse, you may have to stay quiet. And it looks like I've lost. It looks like I'm weak, and I've lost this battle. But you're out to win the war. Where it's, I may lose a battle here and there, but I will not lose the war. Some of those battles God needs you to lose because He's working on the other person and it's the flesh that's being killed. But don't lose the war. Amen. Well, I pray this message is blessed and encouraged and helped you. And if it has with you in that name, that is above all names, the name of Jesus, would you please like, share, subscribe. As you do, you really do help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google. And together we're making a difference. Together we're seeing backsliders brought back, restored into the church. And I thank you for it. And would you consider being a prayer partner with us? Oh, for more information, simply go to robertparis.org because together in these last days, we are truly having a great impact. And we want to do more. We want to start this revival center and really get a place where we can go further with our ignited, our ignited mentoring series. This is about sharing insight from the heroes of the faith, what they thought, what they said. See, I can give you the facts. They were born this day. They did this on this day. I can say what they said, but I want to give you the insight, what made them, how they did it. How did they see the power of God in their lives? And so that that would help you. You can learn from that, so what they did right, what they did wrong. And really, like we said, be sitting under them, be mentored by them. That's the goal of it. So I pray also that would you consider becoming uh, a financial partner? We really need that in these days. And I just want to bless you and thank you, you know, and just really thank all who have come to the plate and helped us and stood with us. You truly have been a great blessing and you cannot fully appreciate all that has been done through your faithful giving. And I just thank you and I bless you. And if God puts in your heart to be a financial partner with us, thank you for more information. Simply go to robertparis.org. And I just thank you as always and remind you that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it, through it and for Him, in that name that is above all names, the name of Jesus we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Thank you.